What's up, what's up, it's Adam. And in this video, I'm going over real quickly off the cuff. I've been so busy, my hair looks ridiculous. I feel like a fool with this hair. I need a haircut so bad. But in this video, I'm just gonna go over my thoughts on what I'm expecting with reviewing the Apple MacBook Air uh, that's just released with the M1 chip. And I'm only the only upgrade I'm gonna do when I buy this thing, because I'm buying it today, is the 16 gigs of RAM space added. But other than that, I'm not gonna do anything else and given that this MacBook Air is not even going to have a fan, I'm really curious to see if it operates and functions similar to iPhones and iPads. Because the thing about it is th there's something tricky and something weird about how most computers, and especially with this one I have now, which is the MacBook Air that I bought last year, last fall, so it wasn't the one released this year, it's the one older than that. And my biggest complaint with this is I got it's my first Apple MacBook Air, first Apple computer I ever bought. I've always been with iPhones, but always been Windows based and PC based. And the thing about it is I wanted just to see what it was like using a Mac, fell in love with it, but I kind of regretted I didn't get more RAM or get a way better processor. So what I'm curious about is now that Apple's moving into everything being internal, we obviously see that the benchmark and just speed and all the nerdy stuff of how great the A14 performs in these new iPhones. If they can make an iPhone perform that great, that's surpassing iMac speeds, then what the heck is it gonna do when I upgrade from this thing? Because the, the biggest issue I have with this, obviously I could have upgraded the RAM, the process or whatever, but even in the base model level, sometimes, especially if I'm doing conference calls on Skype or whatever, and more particularly, if I plug in anything, so if I'm plugging in a hard drive at the same time or doing anything else hardware wise, like plugging in a headset and things like that, this thing freaks out. It can't handle that much. And I'm not sure why more people aren't freaking out about the battery life, you know, that Apple is promising with more specifically the MacBook Pro, which is 20 hours. That's like two days of use before you can probably even begin to burn through that. Dep depending on what, I mean, think about it. If you had an eight hour, eight hour day uh, with that MacBook Pro, technically they're claiming that you can use this for two days, two work days without draining the battery. I'm telling you, especially with that CPU performance versus power efficiency, which is, I'm just, oh brother. Like, I don't know. I mean, for me, I feel like Apple, Seriously, and I'm not a big Apple sheep fan or anything. I just go for whatever works best functionality wise. Like I said, I've always been a Windows person. I've always been a Windows for work with my computer and iPhone for like my personal life, like something I just want to goof around with. But I am going to be reviewing the MacBook Air with 16 gigabytes of RAM. That's the only update I'm going to be doing. Mainly because I want to see, I almost bought a desktop computer I was going to buy a desktop PC, but now I'm wondering if that's if that's even gonna be necessary. So with all these big claims that Apple is promising, not only am I hoping to replace this thing, cause this thing at this point feels so, it just feels so outdated when it comes to the software and just the hardware functionality of how much I can do with it. Now, given that it's the base model, but I've had base model PCs where they performed a little bit better, even from Acer compared to what I spent the money on for this, compared to past you know, Acer computers. But the only thing is, this thing I can tell is gonna last a lot longer, not just with hardware, because I haven't had any issues. I dropped it a couple times, not even close to breaking. This thing is built like a tank. I've actually gotten used to and loved the keyboard, even though it's not the upgraded one. I, I just feel like it's going to replace my need to have to get a desktop PC for what I do. And with that promise of, 18 to 20 hours of battery life on the MacBook Air and the MacBook Pro. I'm curious to see if this really will replace my need to have to buy even a desktop because that's so much battery life that I'm just like, I, I honestly, especially since I'm someone that likes to be on the go, I like to work remotely and things like that. I don't even know if it's necessary for me to buy a desktop after these have been released. All right, and before, I, I just don't wanna to go too much on a rant because like I said, I'm just kind of freaking out a lot about the updated Mac OS Big Sur that just released today. It actually released at 11 a.m. Uh, this morning, but I didn't have enough memory on my MacBook Air to edit, delete a lot of stuff, so I will be using it and just kind of going over my review and thoughts on that as well. 
But even with that, the biggest thing about it is I just don't understand why no one else is talking about how awesome it's going to be to finally use iPad and iPhone apps, if I'm right, on your MacBook because of the Big Sur update. I mean, think about that. I can't even tell you how many times I made phone calls and used messages on my computer and just left my phone at home if I didn't need it, if I was out and about, or just being at home, not having to pick up two How many times do you go to the coffee shop or you go out in public, or when we did, <laughs> and you would see somebody on their phone and their laptop's in front of them, but they get distracted on their phone? I mean, Instagram for a long time wouldn't even let you do much on their desktop. Actually, for the longest time, Instagram wouldn't even let you browse or do anything natively on desktops. So even if you requested a mobile website, it just wouldn't work. So imagine now that you, I wonder what developers are going to do like Instagram or I don't know, just name anything else. I, they're just what I bring up because it's one of my favorite apps. But imagine what is going to be capable with things you can only find on mobile. Look at LumaFusion, for example. That's another thing that popped in my head. All of these only, you know, these mobile friendly apps that now you can basically mirror not just screen sharing or anything like that, but mirror what you could do on your iPhone onto your Mac. So for me, that's kind of mind blowing that they finally did that because I'm just thinking about how when I get my new MacBook, it's probably going to be the only thing in front of me like 90% of the day. I mean, I just have no reason to have my phone out at the same time anymore. Uh, it's kind of like the Apple Watch. I mean, it just depends on what you're doing. You know, with an Apple Watch, if you're going on a run, it is so convenient not having to bring your phone, especially if you like a big phone, like if you had the iPhone 12 Pro Max or something, why would you go for a run with that thing? And those stupid armbands, I, I mean, I've never been a fan of it. And I'm telling you, just not having to bring my phone and only have this, if you have cell data especially, is seriously a game changer. I've been going on runs more and more just because of that ever since I bought this thing. So imagine the lifestyle difference of just having to have your computer. You can do everything on there. Now, it's yet to be determined and yet to be seen how exactly, I mean, do you need your phone with you when you do that kind of thing? This is the year where everything people complained about with Apple that they were able to do on Android basically got a major shift in that. Everything people are complaining about, which is why they go to Windows, is now what you can do on Mac OS. Now, my last big question I was thinking about was if they have these kinds of promises with what they're releasing already, I don't even want to, I can't even imagine what they could do with iMacs. But anyway, uh, I look forward to reviewing the new MacBook Air when I get it in my hands. Uh, until then, I'm just going to have to beast this through and <laughs> use it for what I can. Uh, hopefully I get it sooner than later. I mean, it felt like the Apple website was crashing earlier when I was going to order mine. And uh, so hopefully it's working now. Uh, but who knows? We'll see what happens. Crossing my fingers, I get it next week. And uh, until then, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching.